What's up everybody, how's it going? I'm finally back from tour. I'm excited to start making videos again. Um, the biggest hot topic right now that I see just all across the board is how to get louder mixes. Um, and I already did a video uh, on how to get uh, your, your RMS level up, your perceived volume up, uh, using saturation. But what I wanna bring you today is something that's even more powerful than that, possibly the most effective way to get louder mixes. And that's what I'm about to show you. So what I have here is I have four different iterations of the exact same set of instruments playing a song in a slightly different way. So let's go ahead and listen to this first one. All right, so that's, that's the first idea. We've got a bass sound, we've got uh, some drums, We've got a kind of uh, sound effect kind of thing, and then we've got um, some plucked, like synth kind of sounds, all right? Um, when I listen to this, I immediately have a thought about this mix, and I'm wondering if some of you guys are already guessing what's going on here. Well, to me, this is not composed well. It's not composed to sound loud. Why is that? Well, I've got a lot of instruments that are hitting at the same time. Listen to this. Notice how the kick drum and the bass are hitting at exactly the same time. This, this sound effect that's got some low end in it is hitting on the downbeat. We've got this, uh, this serum sound, this uh, pluck sound hitting at the same time as the snare drums. That's th we've got all kinds of stuff competing for your ear. Okay, so what I've done is I've gone in here and I've created a separate mix of the same four instruments, but the way that I composed it, the way that I wrote the music, is so that we don't have conflicting uh, transients. We don't have conflicting instruments. They're hitting at different times. Check this out. So this is the first one. Now here's the second one. Now, to me, this is composed to sound loud. Why is that? Okay, right away you're like, well, Anthony, the first one sounds louder. You now there's more going on, it just sounds louder to my ears. The second one doesn't sound as loud. Well, that's where doing this long enough and working with limiters long enough, you start to understand a very simple thing. When the limiter is working all the time, it's always working to push the gain down of something that's constantly hitting it, you're going to end up with a softer sounding mix, a quieter sounding mix, because the limiter is always working to push that gain down. What I've done in the master track is I've added a limiter that's pushing four decibels into the threshold, okay? It's pushing four more decibels than what's already there, and I'm removing six decibels because it's gonna get louder, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this first one, all right, and I'm gonna turn the limiter on. Okay, so here's with the limiter on. And it's just horrible. That's horrible. I hear distortion. I hear I'm losing the snare drum almost completely. All right, that's the first one. Let's play the second one through the same exact limiter. Y'all, I haven't changed anything. These are exactly the same instruments, all right? Let's listen to the second one. Now, what I want you to do when you compare listening to these two, I don't want you to maybe listen as a whole mix just yet. Listen to, pick an instrument to listen to, be it the bass, be it the, the, the plucked sounds, be it the kick drum, the snare drum, whatever. Listen to the differences between these two mixes. Listen, let's, let's, let's just do it together. Let's listen to the, the, the plucked sound together. Now, when I listen to that plucked sound, I hear distortion because it's trying to push through, but it only gets to push through very, very minutely. I hear um, the tail end getting cut off. I hear certain hits being louder than others. Now, if you listen to the second mix. Now, I hear it more consistently. Both of these, I just want to reiterate, both of these are way hard limited, okay? I'm doing this on purpose. I'm not a noob. I know what I'm doing. I'm purposefully pushing the limiter very hard because I want you to hear these issues that are that are coming up, okay? So 
listening to this pluck sound, I hear a more consistent sound. It sounds more consistent. I can hear the same sound. Uh, I hear the brightness of it not getting cut off. I hear the tail end of the reverb. I hear all. That, I hear all that other stuff. So now let's listen to the bass. Now the bass is consistent. Okay. But what it's doing is the treble content of the bass is getting is getting smacked around by the limiter. When I listen to this. Now, doesn't that sound the same every single time? There's that bright kind of saw edge on the top of it. Um, now let's go ahead and listen to the drums. Listen to the snare drum specifically. That snare drum is having so much trouble coming through here. But when I listen to the second mix, it's still having trouble getting through, but that trouble that it's having is almost desirable. You know, it spreads out those frequencies, makes it kind of sound like it's it's got like an extra amount of like room reflection reverb on it or something. You know, it's desirable. Okay. Now, why does this now sound? Now, if if you were to listen to these in 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 a holistic term, you may still say that this first mix versus the second mix sounds louder, but Let's 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 talk about what we're actually doing here. We're raising the perceived volume of each instrument separately because they're hitting at different times. Because these are all hitting together, the perceived volume of this entire track is actually less because of why? Why? Because I can't effectively add a limiter here. And in fact, let's do it this way. I'm going to take a se a second limiter here, okay? I'm going to turn the first one off. I can't effectively limit this first track as well as I can the second track as hard as I can because the instruments are hitting at the same time and making the limiter work harder so you're getting more distortion. So really, I could probably only add, you know, maybe two decibels of gain to this and I'm going to subtract six. Okay, so now let's go ahead and listen to this limiter. It's still horrible, right? It's still horrible, but I could pass that. For, you, for, you, for your listening, I can pass that. I'm, you know, really, I could probably only feed about, you know, a little bit more into this limiter. I mean, really, I could just leave it at zero. It's still bad, but, you know, we're kind of getting closer to where we sounded with the other mix. So now let me turn this limiter off. I'm going to turn this limiter on and play the second one. Now which one sounds louder? Let me try to explain that again. The reason I'm using a, a different limiter on this first track is because this track is composed so poorly that if I was a mastering engineer at the very end of this track, I would have to feed my limiter a whole lot less of the gain coming in, even though the original gain coming out of this is, is pretty much the same, okay? What that means is that a badly composed track is going to end up getting mastered at a lot lower level, okay? I can't use the features of my limiter as much. I can't use stacks of limiters. I can't use anything that I would like to use to try to make this mix better. I mean, one thing I could do is I could pull a lot of the bass end out of this, but this is the key to getting louder mixes, is composing properly, okay? I have to use two completely different limiter settings because of the bad composition that we have going on here. The second one, I can get a louder perceived volume, all right? So people ask me, you know, I want to sound like Tipper. I want to sound like Bass Nectar. I want to sound like these artists that are, you know, they sound super huge. Well, okay, there's a reason why their music is really popular right now. The main reason is that they use something called call and response. Okay, Tipper's the, the he's like the king of this thing. Waga gaga, blah 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 blah, ma 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 ma, wap up, All the sounds are happening on their own. They're not happening on top of each other. The kick drum and the hi-hats are never hitting at the same time. The snare drum and the hi-hats are never hitting at the same time. Why? Because it makes it sound louder. And unfortunately, in this kind of this this kind of ecosystem right now, um, composition loud composition is something that people are desiring. So there is a way, though, to compose what you want and still get um, away with some of these compositional errors. Um, and a lot of people's knee-jerk reaction to trying to make that work is the next example, okay? So I'm going to turn both these limiters off, all right? In this next example, 
much like the first one, I use the composition from the first section, okay? This is that horrible composition, and I'm trying to fix it with the most popular way to fix bad composition, and that's using sidechain compression, okay? What is sidechain compression, for those of you that don't know? It's listening to one aspect of one track and compressing another track based on that track. What is that doing? What that means is that when the kick drum hits, for example, on this bass, it will duck the bass volume. What that's actually doing is creating what? Call and response. It's creating the conditions for the kick drum to happen when the bass isn't, okay? But I want to show you, you can only get so far with this, all right? Let's just go ahead and listen to this first one again. And let's go ahead and listen to this third one. Now, I've done a lot of side chain compression. Let's take a listen. Now, you can already, I hope you can already hear the caveats that have had to be, that have to be made to do this, okay? You can hear ducking in this cool little bass sound effect. The uh, kick drum is coming through really well, but it's almost overpowering the mix. Remember, I haven't changed any volume settings in any of these tracks. These are all just the same tracks, and I'm doing that on purpose to show you the differences. In the bass, you can hear it ducking left and right. Right? Okay, so, all right, we've looked at sidechain compression. I mean, maybe I'll do a tutorial on sidechain compression um, and, and the ways that you can use it right. Um, some people would argue that my tactics using sidechain compression aren't as good as theirs. I'll tell you another thing. I use sidechain side chain compression all the time, but it doesn't matter nearly as much. I would say like 10% of the time, sidechain compression can, can help you get a louder mix versus better composition. So let's go ahead and look at maybe another way okay, to make this second composition where I've composed this correctly even better and even louder, all right? So this is what the second composition sounds like. This is the third one. And while this third one um, is prepared better for a limiter, um, in fact, I can show you. This third one, I'm gonna turn on the first limiter and play the third one. Yes, it is horrible, but it's better than this first one. Take a listen. Oh, just pure, cr pure trash. But this third one, notice how it's not challenging the, the, the limiter as much, okay? Cool. But still, if I run the second mix through this first limiter, it sounds even better. Right? So... Now I want to show you the fourth mix and the final mix. Here, I've done some other things other than using sidechain compression just to prove my point. Not only have I taken the, this, this, this liberty to have the second mix, this better sounding mix, but I've also went in and done what? I've EQ'd, okay? Which, again, is even more effective, much more effective. Like, uh, yeah, 90% more effective. Most 90% of the time it's going to be more effective, sorry, than using sidechain compression. Because now what I've done is I've scooped out hot spots, okay? My kick drum is taking a lot of this area up. So I decided to boost in the bass line what I felt like the most, you know, prominent part of it is, and that's its mid-range, okay? So now in the kick drum, I've decided to scoop out some of that mid-range that both this bass and then this bass sound effect kind of tended to, to hang out in. So I decided to boost the highs of the bass sound effect and... I decided to boost a little bit of kind of the reverb area of the pluck and remove some of that low end. So what I've done is I've carved out a, a space for each one of these sounds, okay? What I couldn't get done compositionally, my next thought process is EQ. What can I do with EQ to make this better? So now when I play this, listen to how the limiter gets challenged. <laughs> That is so close to being almost passable there. Now let's listen to that versus the second mix. Now notice that there's competition in the bass. But in this one, there's less competition in the bass. 
And I can hear that reverb better. This is the second mix. This is the fourth mix. Okay, so I hope that this really helps you. I hope this really, really, really helps you because uh, the I'm a mastering engineer. That's what I do. It's kind of my bread and butter. When I receive mixes from people, uh, almost you know ninety percent of the time, the 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 young young people making music, the the noobs, the people that are just getting started with this stuff, are making this specific mistake: getting a loud sound and a loud song starts with composition. I know that. That sucks that there isn't a plugin that can fix that for you, but that's just that's just the case. That's the case. Composing for loudness is the first step that you should do if you want to achieve a loud mix. The next thing that you want to do is you want to carve out space. The, the, the thing after that, if you can't figure anything else out, sidechain compression. Sure. All right. Uh, just so you know, when you're composing for loudness, you're composing for really what you're doing is you're composing for a limiter. Okay, you're trying to get the limiter to not have to do a lot of pushing down constantly. You want it to be able to breathe with your music. And the way to do that is to compose properly. Awesome. So I hope you guys got a lot of use out of this. I hope this really helps you. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Tell your friends about Seed to Stage. Um, I'm really enjoying making these videos. I hope you're enjoying them too. Um, I can't wait to see what becomes of this. Uh, much love, everybody. Thanks.